that were selling albums that were not being played on the radio. Before long, the top 40 was flooded with high visibility video artists who quickly superseded the interchangeable superstars of the late 70s and early 80s. Thank God for MTV. It's brought a new level of energy to, uh, to the charts. The chart that I saw in 1980 by 1982 was completely different. It was fantastic. If there had been videos for Air Supply and Christopher Cross, they would have probably played them. But they didn't exist, so they had to look to the newer music. Before MTV, British bands had been largely absent from the American charts. But because they had made videos for UK TV shows, British and European bands were poised to swiftly capitalize on music television. The bands that actually had videos ready seemed to be these British haircut bands with one great song. I mean, your Dexys Midnight Runners, your Hazy Vantasy, your Kajagoogoos. They're visual bands, and they're, they're fun to watch. I think I was one of the first beneficiaries of the MTV situation with, with the cars video. Safety dance by Men Without Hats. That was the video that defined it all. I mean, to be honest, I like 99 Love Balloons. I used to love that song. I like the video and the whole night. Bands that had once been snubbed by radio could now fight back on a new battleground and found themselves selling records on the strength of their videos. America's very, very slow in catching up in the fact that videos do sell records. Videos compress the introduction process between bands and prospective fans. And like many first impressions, looks, attitude, and a sense of humor were important. Aussie rockers men at work realized this, and viewers quickly connected with their quirky videos. I come from a the personality of the band came out uh, not through expensive film clips, but just through um, simple ideas. And I think that that's what people responded to. Men at Work's irreverent videos helped drive their singles Who Can It Be Now and Down Under to number one, and the band became the best-selling act of 1982. But it was an English band that made the biggest splash in the new medium. I adore Duran Duran. Even to this day, I just think that they're remarkable. With their good looks and catchy pop songs, Duran Duran were a band ready-made for the video era. The band's videos, shot on film and set in exotic locales, quickly gained popularity in the U.S. I remember when Duran Duran came out and changed the whole way that we watch videos and all of a sudden there were these big cinematic travelogue type productions it looked like Lawrence of Arabia really made your international success on the basis of videos isn't that correct uh, I think videos have certainly worked to our advantage I guess it's helpful <laughs> A lot of people who were sort of scared of what Duran Duran was. It was sort of, you know, out with the old guard. This is, this is the way uh, the future is going to look. Hi there. I'm a very normal person and my name's Boy George. With loads of eyeliner, streaked hair, and a decidedly offbeat fashion sense, the new video stars played fast and loose with issues of gender and sexuality. People hadn't seen things like us before, you know. We were the new breed of, of freaks for people to dine on. Is it a guy or is it a girl? They call me like offspring of a gay Rastafarian pastry chef. Culture Club's Boy George kept viewers guessing with his androgynous persona, and he wasn't bashful about it. Androgynous is a trendy word, and I hate it. <laughs> there were kids living in the outback, you know, living in these small cities that were gay or odd or, or, or felt disenfranchised, and suddenly, you know, MTV was bringing all these freaks into their hometown. It was like, oh my God, that guy's wearing so much makeup, what a freak. But then you get used to him, and the songs are good, and all of a sudden it does, it becomes acceptable. Perhaps the biggest surprise from this young Englishman in a dress with the eyeshadow and lipstick is his broad appeal to middle America. He's made Culture Club's music popular with all ages, from grade schoolers to senior citizens. Yeah. 
While Boy George tested the limits of masculinity, Annie Lennox from the Eurythmics experimented with bending gender the other way. Annie Lennox was kind of like the female version of myself. It was like, you know, the sort of female androgynous character of the time. I find the video medium rather bland, and Dave and I are trying to, to produce something that, is, that doesn't have those qualities. It was often easy to miss how great a singer Annie Lennox was because of a lot of you know, her fascination with imagery. But she's become an important force because of her voice. As the video age entered adolescence, the verdict seemed to be that while fans might be drawn in by a band's video, they were just as likely to move on unless the music was good. Video television froze out.